Hello, so we've just arrived in Cairo and we're here with Hamdi and Haydar who is our representative in Cairo and our tour guide here. We're very excited to be here. Yeah, I'm going to be your tour guide guys. Uh, thank you so much <laughs> for, for looking after us here guys on our Divine Origins Egypt retreat with Awake Ones. And um, so, so tell us, are you excited to have us here? And, it's really and my pleasure. What do yeah. we have in store, Hamdi? Um, for me, it's something really different because we're gonna like uh, show how is lovely Egyptian uh, history and how is the, uh, the clean energy we have in Egypt. With us, you know, I'm sure your dream will come true. Yeah. Amazing. So Lorraine, what about you? What are you expecting, my darling, of our retreat here in Egypt? Well, just being here is already the, the, the energy here is, is so high it's so I don't know it's just so full of everything knowledge information as I said it being here awakens the, the memories of, uh, of the past and, and experiences that you've already had so I'm just really excited about what we're gonna learn and uh, you know we have these guys that are gonna take us around and share and we're gonna go to some new places that even we haven't been to before especially Tel El Amarna, which is Akhenaten's uh, palace, which I'm more excited about than anything because I've been following him since I was really young. And so she's a bit besotted, yeah, so, yeah. this one, and very besotted. And so, Hedda, can you tell us about some of the highlights? Of course, of course, you know, like it's going to be good a chance because we're going to be in some sites that not so many people go for it. So we will be in most of the sites or some of them at least will be uh, mostly alone. So it will give us good a chance to meditate and to have our own time and uh, at the same time most of this site however they are not so crowded but they're gonna be you know like the most important and the most beautiful sites in Asia so we're gonna be in some important ones that uh, we'll know why not so many go for it after we finish our tours there so I said, I'm, I'm really excited to start the tour with you guys right now we're so excited. So and the boss, <laughs> we'd like to hear from the boss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've just been sitting here this morning working out our itinerary with Hamdi and Haydar and yeah, Laurie and I are like little pigs in poo and we've got our, our retreaters are arriving this evening so we've planned everything. We're going to pick them up from the airport and give them a really warm welcome. So very excited and you can follow us all along the way of this journey. So thank you so much. Bye. Bye guys. See you in Cairo. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome through downtown Cairo. <laughs> it's hot, but it's not like unbearable, is it? No, it's perfect. It's I've been really good. For sunshine for a really, sunshine. really long time. Amazing. <laughs> So Laurie and I have spent our first day here in Cairo and we're waiting for our retreaters to arrive tonight but today we've just been doing a little recce for some exciting things that we might include in our retreats in the future. Yeah, we found some amazing hotels where there's a lot of uniqueness, things that you wouldn't ordinarily find and they're secret gems I think, hidden gems yeah. that we've been given access to and we think we'll really just put the icing on the cake of the retreat really just have to, to, to start off get people acclimatized into the Egyptian way and then uh, for sure uh, some really decadent fabulous places to, to finish up in so that people get a reward for the hard work that they've done exactly and we've even we've sampled some amazing food to brilliant Egyptian street food um, and we have had some amazing Egyptian coffee, Turkish coffee, yeah. well, Arabic coffee. Um, and I might have had a few too many. I've, I've had about four. <laughs> I don't know. And we've been learning Egyptian. So we've been learning how to speak. Yeah. So yes, we are. We're going to be practicing our uh, our Egyptian language. My new favourite word is Mumtaz. Mumtaz, which is excellent. Everything here is. And Gamil and Gamilla, which is beautiful. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, my uh, my phrase now is uh, right. Let me get this right. Men fadlek fain mahal malabes, which is please. Where is the clothes shop? <laughs> so yes, we are getting very very acquainted 
so that we can live uh, Yamin and not uh, Shamal. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Anna, Anna Saida. Anna Saida. <laughs> I'm very happy. Saida, Anna? No, Anna Saida. Anna Saida. Anna Saida. I'm happy. And, and the other one was Anna Mabsuta. Mabsuta. Anna, Anna Mabsuta. Mabsuta. She's Egyptian, but I'm very happy. Yeah. And as you can hear, the, the Cairo traffic, we're, we're in the midst of. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, we're in the midst of Cairo traffic, so. <laughs> I think we'll get back to our hotel quicker than we think. <laughs> had to buy tickets to use photography inside the Cairo Museum and Marianne was uh, unceremoniously told she had to lock her big uh, SLR camera in a locker and uh, we've just had a conversation about how we can be firm yet feminine <laughs> and using love to, shift, using the love to shift the old ways and the energy and, and stepping uh, into their power yeah. not allowing men to dominate and the men, love so men, it's done gently and it creates confusion men not needing to be threatened exactly and remembering to use the Ho'oponopono in these situations to heal whatever that is in ourselves and it does shift the energy completely and uh, we've just uh, <laughs> Reham our guide has just brought back the key to the locker that Marianne's camera is in and it is 111 do you want to hold it up? 111 111 magic number <laughs> Amazing. visited <laughs> well I first visited that church probably about 15 years ago and I had never felt energy like it it just literally felt like my whole energy field was buzzing and sparkling and it was just incredibly emotional and it's sometimes you think you've made stuff up in your own head because my memory of it was just so powerful and so we went to a church earlier and, uh, and I knew immediately that it wasn't the right church and then we, as soon as we walked into this one I felt emotional again and I, I you, know, you just know that something very significant happened in that place I wasn't the least bit surprised that you were completely bowled over and emotional yeah I was emotional in the first one the hanging church I'm in it, walking up to those Roman the Roman fortress because here we're in a place in Cairo where all the religions converge yeah. so we've been to a mosque we've been to a Coptic church two Coptic churches and we've just been to the um, synagogue and we're walking streets now behind us we're walking the streets where the Holy Family would have walked this is like going back to the time of Christ time here but you feel it like when I, as soon as I walked into those places, I didn't even, you don't even know why you're crying or why you're emotional. The emotion just comes up out of the pit of somewhere, doesn't it? It's but also we have to remember that there was a lot of persecution, especially in, yeah. in the early centuries when the Romans came through, that uh, you know the Christians were not allowed yeah. to practice, and so they were... Um, well, they fled through this street, the street behind us. You can see this is the street where yeah. the Christians would have fled the Romans. The, uh, you know being persecuted by them and there's a huge gate up ahead which yeah. we'll, we'll show you yeah. um, so you can feel it so that was part of the energy that we needed to clear when we got in there and yeah. also just a lot of coming back to the divine feminine a lot of particularly in the synagogue where there's you know an outside staircase and a floor for the women who are not allowed into the main building into the main bit so we just did a bit of a clearing for the suppression of women which yeah, Those which is the everywhere, and yeah, I mean, really we know that the Coptics are still being persecuted today. There's been a lot of um, shootings of Coptics recently, so yeah, I mean, 
And it's all about the balance of the male and, fem male and female, masculine and feminine, isn't it? It is. But hopefully things are changing. That's a good news. Yeah. <laughs>
Pyramid. Pyramid. And you can see up our noses. <laughs> <laughs> and unbelievably, it's, it's raining. raining. <laughs> Hot, but raining. But also sunny at the same time. Yeah, so How does this happen? We're waiting for the rainbow to appear. And one of our group had a, a little vision of cleansing and bathing the pyramids and giving the pyramids a facial and everything yesterday and now it seems they're being washed in the rain. So amazing. <laughs> and uh, so we're just going to go and explore. We're going to go around to the other side away from the, the main hub up so that we can do a bit of a meditation and so that we can all tune in. Touting. Touting, yeah, selling us stuff. So luckily we've got a great guy in Haydar that most people seem to know and respect. So every time they walk up to us and see him, they sort of go, oh, yeah, yeah. and walk off again. <laughs> and the Sphinx so we'll try and film a little bit for you if we can. Yes. And this is new to me too even though I've been to Cairo five times now somehow I've never done this show so it's going to be really interesting. Very exciting. Yeah. I am the faithful warden at the foot of his law. So faithful, so vigilant, so near him <laughs> that he gave me his face for my own. I am a pharaoh's companion, and I am he, no flash. the pharaoh. Through the ages, I received many names from the people who came to me in adoration. 